A semiconductor alone does not make a semiconductor component. Only when semiconductors are combined do they make components such as diodes. In this section, you will see how diodes are made and how they work. You will find out how they are used as rectifiers and in protective circuits. You will also get to know special types of diode, such as Zener and light-emitting diodes. Essentially, every diode is a combination of a p-type region and an n-type region. Watch what happens when a p-type semiconductor comes into contact with an n-type semiconductor. Drag the p-type semiconductor to the n-type semiconductor. The free electrons in the n-type region move to the p-type region and fill the holes. The holes in the p-type region move to the n-type region and combine with the electrons. These processes are called diffusion and recombination of electrons and holes. When the electrons and holes recombine, all the spaces in the crystal lattice are properly filled. However, Voltage builds up in each crystal because the doping atoms are electrically charged. What is the polarity? Drag the flags to the crystals. Very good. The phosphorus atoms are positively charged because they have shed electrons which have now recombined. The aluminium atoms are negatively charged because the holes have been filled. Because of this voltage, diffusion does not continue indefinitely, but comes to a halt. What do you think? Can current flow in the depletion region? Click the answer you think is right. No, that's not right. Current cannot flow in the diffusion zone because there are no charge carriers which can move freely. The electrons and holes have combined. Although the atoms of the doping elements are charged, they cannot move. What happens when you apply the negative terminal of an external circuit to the p-type region and the positive terminal of an external circuit to the n-type region? Try it out by closing the switch. The electrons in the n-type region are attracted by the positive voltage and the holes in the p-type region by the negative voltage. This draws off more charge carriers and the depletion region becomes wider. No current can flow. The depletion region acts as an insulator. Now the terminals of the external circuit have been reversed. In other words, the positive terminal is connected to the p-type region and the negative terminal is connected to the n-type region. Gradually increase the voltage. The current and voltage are shown in the graph. As the external voltage is applied, more and more charge carriers from either side are pushed into the depletion region. At a certain voltage, the depletion region disappears. This voltage is called the forward voltage. If the voltage is increased further, current flows through the semiconductor. You can observe what happens to the depletion region by clicking the arrows on the voltage source. Did you see what happened on the previous page? At 0.7 volts, the depletion region disappeared and current began to flow.
an expert could tell you straight away that you were looking at a silicon diode. This is because the forward voltage depends almost entirely on the semiconductor material. Other factors such as the design and the temperature have only a negligible effect. Here you can see the forward voltage of a standard semiconductor. At the heart of a diode lies a semiconductor crystal, which, as you know, consists of an N-type region and a P-type region. As you can see here, planar diodes consist of one thin plate of N-type silicon and one of P-type silicon. They are enclosed in a housing and have wire connections. These diodes are mainly used as rectifiers, because the extensive PN junction allows high currents. The terminal connected to the N-type region is called the cathode of the diode. The terminal connected to the P-type region is called the anode. On point contact diodes, the point of a metal wire is fused to an N-type semiconductor plate. A small point-shaped P-type region forms around the point of the metal. This type of diode is used, for example, in radio applications and allows fast switching. The electrical symbol for a diode indicates that current can only flow in one direction. The arrow shows the direction of conventional current. The bar on the cathode represents the N-type silicon plate. It is also marked on the housing of the diode. The diode characteristic shows the flow of current through the diode in relation to the externally applied voltage. It summarizes the effects on the depletion region. Click each section of the diode characteristic. Note that the reverse bias part of the characteristic is a hundred times condensed so that it fits on the page. At low forward voltages, no current flows. The external voltage is still too low to completely eliminate the depletion region. At higher forward bias voltages, current can flow through the diode. Under reverse bias, the current flow through the diode is practically zero. At very high reverse bias voltages, breakdown through the depletion region occurs. This can irreversibly damage the diode. You can find out whether or not a diode is intact by measuring its resistance using a multimeter. An intact diode conducts test current from the multimeter under forward bias, and its resistance is low. The display shows the forward voltage. If the test voltage is applied with reverse bias, the resistance is very high and the display indicates overload. The situation with a defective diode is different. In this case, the resistance is very high in both directions. Note that a special switch position on the multimeter is required for this resistance test. This is because the test voltage has to be higher than the forward voltage. Because diodes only conduct current in one direction, they can be used to rectify alternating current. This circuit is supplied with AC voltage. Use the oscilloscope to check the signal voltage on the first and second resistors. Drag the probes to the connections at the top of the resistors. The oscilloscope shows that the diode only allows the positive half wave to pass. The AC voltage is converted to a pulsating DC voltage. There is also a difference in the positive part of the voltage curve. The half wave is reduced by the forward voltage. Electromagnetic components are often used in vehicle electrical systems. 
These include electric motors, relays and solenoid valves, all of which contain magnetic coils and exhibit the phenomenon of induction. What happens when the coil is switched off? Click the switch. The magnetic field is reduced. The energy in the magnetic field allows current to pass through the coil. The current builds up at the switch contacts. This generates an induced voltage which can briefly be many times higher than the operating voltage. This causes flashover at the switch contacts, burns the contacts as a result and can destroy electronic switches. The remedy is to install what is known as a freewheeling diode. What does the freewheeling diode do in a closed circuit? Click the statement which is true. Correct, because the diode is installed under reverse bias. Now open the switch. The induced current can now flow through the freewheeling diode. The induced voltage does not build up to dangerous levels. The switch remains protected. Here you can see two freewheeling diodes connected parallel to the relay coils. The properties of the depletion region depend on how heavily the semiconductor crystals are doped. If the depletion region is very thin, electrons can tunnel through the depletion region at voltages as low as 5 volts. This means they disappear from the p-type region and reappear in the n-type region. This is called the Zener effect, after the man who discovered it. At high voltages, something similar to flashover occurs. Electrons are accelerated out of the n-type region through the depletion region due to the applied voltage. When this happens, they tear more electrons out of the atoms, and these are also accelerated. This results in avalanche breakdown. Both these breakdown effects can be exploited in the production of what are known as Zener diodes. These are diodes manufactured with a precisely defined breakdown voltage of between 2 and 300 volts. In this case, 10 volts. The characteristics of Zena diodes are essentially the same as those of normal diodes. The only difference is that the breakdown is controlled. Operation in the breakdown range does not damage the Zena diode. Zener diodes are normally operated under reverse bias. Change the source voltage in this circuit, featuring a resistor and a Zener diode connected in series. As you can see, the breakdown voltage is always across the Zener diode. The rest of the voltage is across the resistor. It also limits the breakdown current of the Zener diode. This means that a constant voltage is always available at the voltage divider. This does not change, even if the input voltage fluctuates, as long as it exceeds the breakdown voltage. Zener diodes are often used in electronic components, which stabilize the 5 volts which frequently occur in control units. Now we come to a different type of diode. Do you remember that there is a voltage difference between the n-type and p-type regions? Electrons which cross the depletion region and, consequently, encounter the voltage difference are slowed down. In silicon diodes, the kinetic energy thus released is converted into heat. With special semiconductor materials, such as gallium arsenide and gallium phosphide, the voltage difference is so great that light is emitted. This effect is put to use in light-emitting diodes. The semiconductor crystal is fitted in a transparent plastic housing. The holder for the semiconductor material has a reflective coating. This improves light efficiency. 
When current flows under forward bias through the LED, the material in the PN junction lights up. Try it out. Move the mouse over the cutaway drawing to see the names of the components. LEDs have a number of advantages over the glowing filament of a light bulb. An LED emits cold light. Because no heat is emitted, the service life and efficiency are much better. The light is not emitted in a broad spectrum, resulting in white light, but only in a specific range of the spectrum. This depends on the semiconductor material. Therefore, colored overlays are not required. Would you like to know the illumination colors of LEDs? Click them. The color is determined by the phosphorus content of the doping. The higher the phosphorus content, the higher the forward voltage and the shorter the wavelength of the light, from red, via yellow, and green, to blue. Click the link for more information on connecting LEDs. LEDs are used as indicator components, for example as a function display for switches. However, they are also used to illuminate switch symbols, scales, indicators and the dashboard display. Most recently, LEDs have been used for indicator and brake lights. In these applications, arrays of super bright LEDs are used. LEDs can be switched on and off extremely quickly several million times per second, unlike light bulbs, which produce afterglow. This means they can be used as transmitters for data transfer via fiber optic networks, for example, in a most bus.